World War II games. Holy shit, did we get a lot of these back in the day. We got World War II games out the arse, non-stop, in all different genres. And goddamn, did I love it. Now, a lot of gamers did get sick of them, but I never did. I loved them. But sadly for me, they did eventually die out, and, well, they've now been gone for a long time. Way too long, if you ask me. And I'm so ready for them to make a comeback. But I tell you what, I swear to God, we have had way more zombie games than we ever got World War II games. I'm sure of it. Now, those are something I am sick of. But anyway, for this video, it's going to be my top five World War II games of all time. So without further ado, let's get into it. So kicking off at number 5, it's Commandos Behind Enemy Lines. So this was a stealth oriented strategy game that had you controlling 6 commandos who were, well, you guessed it, behind enemy lines. In each mission Tasha with, well, one way to put it, will be blowing shit up. You have to destroy things such as fuel depots, dams, enemy HQ, planes, various Nazi weapons, and each commando had their own unique abilities to get the job done. We had the Green Beret who could lift heavy objects like explosive barrels, he could also pick up bodies and hide them, get them out of enemy sight. We had the Sniper who was great for taking out enemies silently from a distance. We had the Marine who could swim and control boats, the driver who could control vehicles including the tank, the sapper who handled your explosives and could cut wire fences, and we had the spy who could crack on enemy uniform, freely wander around and even distract the enemy. The maps were incredibly detailed, they just looked amazing, I still think it looks good to this day, and the game was very challenging, I mean it was really hard, you really had to think about every move that you made, there was so little room for error, it was so easy to screw up and end up with a whole area on alert and then you'd be royally fucked. But it was very, very satisfying and very rewarding when you finally got free missions. It really was. Just a fantastic game. And got a few sequels as well. All worth checking out. It's absolutely a fantastic series. But the first was definitely my favourite. So for number four. Well, you just got to have this game on your list somewhere. I mean, if you're going to do a top World War II games list, you've got to have this on there somewhere. It's, of course, Medal of Honor Allied Assault. When this game came out, to me, it was the ultimate World War II game. Nothing came close. The game clearly took a bit of inspiration from Saving Private Ryan, and to me, the standout moment for this game was definitely the D-Day landings, the assault on Omaha Beach. Sure, it might look a bit dated now. I mean, it was 2002. But back then, this was just incredible to experience. I'd never seen anything like it. It blew my mind. I used to play it over and over again. To me, it's still one of the most memorable moments in any video game I've ever played. Now, can you imagine how amazing this could be now? Remember, this was 2002. How incredible could this look now? I have been waiting so long for this to be redone in a shooter. So goddamn long. And now, while the game did have an absolutely cracking campaign, and there was a lot of great missions in there. It was truly awesome. But it also had an absolutely brilliant multiplayer as well. And I used to play it every day after school for such a long time. I kind of became obsessed. And this was the first, you know, multiplayer experience I ever truly got into. I think the first one I ever played was Counter Strike. But this was the one that I first truly got into, and I loved it so much. Just some great memories right there. So, a number three. It's another strategy game. In fact, I consider this to be one of the best RTS games ever. It's Company of Heroes. Now, prior to this, I had played a few World War II RTS games, such as Sudden Strike, but this one was on a whole different level. This was the World War II RTS game I'd been waiting for. The graphics were absolutely amazing, and it was in full 3D, so you could get up close and personal with the action. In fact, I believe it was the first like fully 3D RTS game I had ever played, so that was pretty amazing to me. Now, for this game, it was all about capturing points on the map rather than the base building, which is what I was most familiar with before this, you know, with Command and Conquer and games like that. So you had three resources. You had manpower, munitions, and fuel. And the more points you capture on the map, the more of these resources you have, and the more units you could build. You could get tanks and other vehicles, you get different infantry from snipers to riflemen, mortar teams, engineers, and more. You could upgrade your units and call for artillery strikes and awesome stuff like that. Now, there was a few structures you could build, such as machine gun nests, outposts, you could turn some builds into your barracks. There was barbed wire and sandbags, but it wasn't really about that. You could garrison buildings, there was tons of destruction, which just looked awesome and all these cool little details, which just made the battles amazing. It wasn't about the size of your army in this game, it's what you could do with it. So, for number two, it's Call of Duty. The original Call of Duty, the very first game in one of the biggest, most successful, most well-known video game series 
of all time, the one that started it all. Now these days, I have no love for the series. In fact, I'll be honest, I think it's fucking awful, and it has been for a long time. Activision absolutely butchered it, if you ask me. But it was once amazing, and I was once a massive Call of Duty fan. Now, when this game came along in 2003, this was the one that topped Allied Assault to me and was the greatest World War II game of all time. It blew Allied Assault out of the goddamn water. It was superior in every single way. Now, while Allied Assault had the whole sort of lone wolf approach, it was mostly just, you know, one soldier taking on hundreds of Nazis, kind of winning the war all by himself. It was incredibly unrealistic, but it was still awesome. But Call of Duty did away with that. You weren't just winning the war by yourself. It was way more squad based. And you were just in these awesome battles. The missions were absolutely incredible. All these attack missions and defend missions. It was absolute madness. It was crazy fast paced. Freaking Nazis swarming out the woodwork. Freaking tanks coming at you. It was just, oh, it was amazing. There was not a dull moment in this game. It was incredible. I'd never really seen anything like it at the time. And something really cool about the game as well was you weren't just playing as the US, which it kind of always was up to this game. It was always playing as the US, as though US won the war all by themselves. In this game, we got to play as both the British and the Russians as as well, which was pretty damn cool. The Battle of Stalingrad was in there, which was pretty amazing. And again, like Medal of Honor Art Assault, it had an absolutely phenomenal campaign. I mean, seriously, the campaign is amazing. But it also had an absolutely amazing multiplayer as well, which I played the crap out of. And I got pretty goddamn good at it. And I still say to this day, all these years later, it's still one of my all time favourite multiplayer experiences. And probably always will be. God damn it, Activision, what the hell did you do to this series? So that brings us to number one, my all time favorite World War II game. Eight days watching my men, my family kill, be killed. Eight days wishing it would stop. It is of course, Brothers in Arms, Road to Hill 30. Now I'll be honest, it was very close between this and Call of Duty, but in the end, I had to give this the number one spot. Now when this game came out, it was something a bit different for World War II shooters. It was a breath of fresh air. This was not a run and gun game like we'd seen in Call of Duty and Medal of Honor and the likes. Definitely not. If you tried to play this game like those, yeah, that's not gonna go so well. You're gonna fail hard, and you're gonna get incredibly frustrated. It ain't how you play this game. This was a tactical first person shooter. You had a squad which you controlled. You had a fire team and an assault team, and you had to use them effectively to get through your missions. You're really gonna do it by yourself. It was all about fire and maneuver, the four Fs. Find, fix, flank, and finish. You know, staying out in the open, charging towards the enemy. Yeah, it was a sure way to get yourself killed. It was all about suppressing and flanking. And this game had much more focus on realism. You and your squad could be killed very quickly. It did not take much to put you down. There was no regenerating health. There was no health kits of any kind. There was weapon sway, so you didn't have that perfectly still aim like we usually saw. I really did love the focus on realism. And it made the game pretty goddamn challenging, which to me makes for a far more rewarding experience. Now, while I did love the slow paced gameplay, the realism, the tactical side of it, the intense firefights you got into, I I also absolutely loved just the story and the tone of the game. It was a much more serious and gritty look on World War II, and it was a pretty emotional game, very sad at parts, and it showed the horrors of war. You know, war is hell. It was just an incredible experience, and there's no other World War II games quite like the Brothers in Arms series, and I'm still waiting for the series to return. Seriously, Gearbox, where the hell is the next game? Seriously, this series needs to come back. You want me? Bobby, take me! Take me! So there you have it guys, those are my top 5 World War 2 games of all time. So feel free to post your own list in the comments below if you'd like. And as always guys, thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed. And I'll see you soon.